Hi, everyone. Hello again. We're on page 89 of the Proclaimers book. This is the last page of this chapter, which is advertised the King and the Kingdom from 1919 to 1941. This subhead is the closing days of J.F. Rutherford. Brother Rutherford had developed cancer of the colon and was in poor health at the St. Louis Convention. Still, he managed to give five strong discourses. Following the convention, however, his condition worsened and he was compelled to have a colostomy. Arthur Worsley recalls the day Brother Rutherford said goodbye to the Bethel family. He confided in us that he was going to undergo a serious operation and that whether he lived through it or not, he was confident that we would keep on proclaiming Jehovah's name. He concluded by saying, So, if God wills, I will see you again. If not, keep up the fight. There was not a dry eye in the family. Brother Rutherford, 72 years of age, survived the surgery. Shortly thereafter, he was taken to a residence in California he had named Beth Sarah. It was evident to his loved ones and to medical experts that he would not recover. In fact, he required further surgery. About the middle of December, Nathan H. Knorr, Frederick W. Franz, and Hayden C. Covington arrived from Brooklyn. Hazel Burford, who cared for Brother Rutherford during those sad and trying days, later recalled, They spent several days with him going over the annual report for the yearbook and other organizational matters. After their departure, Brother Rutherford continued to weaken, and about three weeks later, on Thursday, January 8, 1942, he faithfully finished his earthly course. How was the news of Brother Rutherford's death received at Bethel? I will never forget the day we learned of Brother Rutherford's passing, recalled William A. Elroyd, Elrod, who had been a member of the Bethel family for nine years. It was, a noon t it was at noontime when the family was assembled for lunch. The announcement was brief. There was no speeches. No one took the day off to mourn. Rather, we went back to the factory and worked harder than ever. Those were extremely trying times for Jehovah's Witnesses. The war had become a global conflict. The fighting spread from Europe to Africa, then to what was known as the Soviet Union. On December 7th, 1941, just a month before Brother Rutherford's death, Japan, Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor had drawn the United States into the war. In many places, the witnesses were the objects of mob violence and other forms of intense persecution. What would happen now? And then there's a, a footnote at the bottom. Brother Rutherford was survived by his wife, Mary, and their son, Malcolm. Because Sister Rutherford had poor health and found the winters in New York, where the Watchtower Society's headquarters was located, difficult to endure, she and Malcolm had been residing in Southern California, where the climate was better for her health. Sister Rutherford died December 17, 1962, at the age of 93. Notice of her death appeared in the Mon what is that? Monrovia, mm -hmm. California, Daily News Post. Uh, and it stated, Until poor health confined her to her home, she took an active part in the ministerial work of Jehovah's Witnesses. It's interesting what's left out of all of this. You mm -hmm. might get a very rosy view of Rutherford and his family if you just had this page. Yeah. But is it really an honest portrayal of Rutherford? The only hint here of some kind of difficulty is that it says that she had to go with her son and live in Southern California. So now they're all living in Southern California for years. Yeah. And yet there's no mention of them living together. And then you have to go outside this source to find out that they didn't live together. In fact, they were yeah. estranged. Yeah. She doesn't live at Beth Sarum with him and he doesn't join her where she's living and, and and there is reports that she she did not attend his funeral neither did his son 
So what are we to make of these omissions? And of course, the whole page is full of omissions. And mm -hmm. I think the thing that bothers me about this last one is that if they had fessed up about the estrangement of the family and what you said about the funeral, yeah. it would create doubts about his legitimacy, even as a family head, let alone a leader yeah. of God's organization. Yeah, he wouldn't even qualify as an elder. The, the text I'm thinking of here is 1 Timothy 3, where Paul lists the qualifications of elder. He says the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, <laughs> the husband of one wife, sober-minded, well. self-controlled, respectable, respect, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, nor not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? Yeah, so there's a, a number of things that would disqualify him from what we know about him. And of course, one of the big ones is quarrelsome. Uh, yeah. Self-controlled, sober-minded. Well, just read his books, and that's yeah. where it gets for you. It's a, yeah. a personal testimony. That's right. So, I mean, on the on the page, you should show them the page. They have all the books <clears throat> that uh, Rutherford was responsible for, but none of those books are reprinted. So that's his legacy, that none of his work can be reprinted. <clears throat> Well, you know, and if you read them, you'd know why they don't reprint them. They're horrifying. the The tone of them is is one of hostility all the time. Hostility. So I didn't know about that until I was leaving the witnesses. That you know, we had a call that said he was a maniac, and I got very offended by it. We'll post a, a video we did on that. Uh, but then I read him, and I thought, oh my goodness, I, I could not believe the tone. I think most witnesses would be very uncomfortable if they read his tone. Which would explain why not only are these books not reprinted, but, but apparently nowadays they're not even found in Kingdom Hall libraries. And why they might have been persecuted during that period of time. If, if you pick up on your leader and copy him, or even if you hand people books, place them with people, and they read them, and they think, my goodness, is this how you guys are? I don't think you're going to get happy results. You're going to get persecution. Which brings into focus these glowing comments about his last words to the Bethel family, etc. Mm -hmm. Not a dry eye in the family. What did he say? He confided in us that he was going to undergo a serious operation, whether he lived through it or not, he was confident that we would keep on proclaiming Jehovah's name. Mm. What's the problem? Well, Jehovah's name is not the gospel. It's not even part of the gospel in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Do, does the average witness know that? And no. if he doesn't, it's because of the success of the propaganda of the Watchtower now over, yeah. well, 80, 80 or 90 years since Rutherford was the main man. Yeah. They have managed to cover up the fact the name's not in the New Testament. And what was the rest of his gospel? Yeah, so his gospel is different even than Russell's. So he's he's changed it from from Russell, and he's certainly changed it from the New Testament. But his his gospel includes the name as a as a, a name for them too, a brand name mm -hmm. really. Uh, 1914 Invisible Presence. That was not what Russell taught. Even though he did teach the Invisible Presence, he had the date 1874 on it. Yeah. So it's a so, new date. So he's shifted that, and then he's got two classes of Christians. Russell didn't teach that either. So a new hope. We're told by Paul, no less, in Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter 4, that the church has only one hope. If you don't teach that, you're not teaching the good news. Mm -hmm. And Rutherford definitely wasn't teaching it. Mm -hmm. There's no heavenly and earthly classes in yeah. the kingdom of God, the church, that is. Just a, another thing about the tone. You know, you'll notice whenever they quote him, it's in personal conversations. They give you little bits and pieces of things he said, but they don't quote the literature. Yeah. And and I think that there's a reason for that. Go and read just some of, of his literature, and you'll know what we mean by they would not want to repeat 
the tone of, of uh, Rutherford. Of course, go and read it is more of a challenge than it used to be. <laughs> yeah, to find it is hard when, now. When I challenged you, you went to the Kingdom Hall Library. Yeah, and they had all these publications. I could read them. Mm -hmm. Also, the uh, this line at the end of the third paragraph, January 8, January 8, 1942, he faithfully finished his earthly course. What, what do you measure faithfulness by? Yeah. Surely it's adherence to Christ's good news. And yet we see, with, within a minimum of effort, you can see the contrast between yeah. Russell and Rutherford and even their modern good news. That's the biggest reason yeah. they, say, they say that they don't reprint these books because I mean, the, a lot of it has changed over yeah. these 80 years. That I had that line marked too because I thought, you know, did he, he faithfully finished his earthly course. He died like everyone dies. Or would you have said he finished his earthly course faithfully <laughs> if, if he had been faithful? Like to me, it's all in the, in the way you arrange the words. I don't know. And what are our links? Uh, one of them is 5JW Stumble, Maniac Rutherford. Kingdom Hall boredom, and a second one, a return call, said that Rutherford was a maniac, and I was offended, but so I hadn't the, read Rutherford yet. That first one is about two of the Bible studies we had during that period, right? Mm -hmm. And one of them stopped going because of boredom. Yeah. Actually, a whole a couple stopped going because of boredom. Yeah, the other one, it that. was Rutherford that had stumbled him. He was about to be baptized and read Rutherford and just... He's the call that told me he was a maniac, and I, I was offended until I read and had to go and apologize to Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, wherever you are, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See you soon.